try to record here. This is basically, um, yeah, I'm trying to respond to a, a viewer who, um, and I'll look you up, like a proper uh, proper username, uh, who is like, um, you know, can you kind of get a bit more uh, background of what's going on rather than just posting videos? Obviously, I'm not going to be doing a recap every f five seconds. It, it mean, you know, I, and I'm, uh, I apologize if I'm sounding flippant or whatever. Um, I don't, you know, I'd be kind of like, I guess, if you, you started watching like season three of whatever, um, you know, and be like, hey, what the heck's going on? I mean, obviously, you, you would end up having to, um, or at least I would, I would end up having to watch uh, previous episodes. For example, there's one um, I can remember on BritBox. Uh, oh, darn it. I can't remember the, uh, the detective show. But it was like they started on season four. I was like, well, I'm not. And it was one of those British things where, you know, they have continuing little subplots. And I'm like, well, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm not watching. I'm going to start watching from there. So I, I waited and waited and waited. And they started doing, they started finally airing season one. But by then... I'd become so hooked uh, into wargaming and uh, YouTube um, contributors that uh, there was no need for me to have BritBox or Netflix or any of those things. So uh, I didn't end up watching the show. So that's, the, that's that. Um, they snoozed and they lost my money. Um, and now I give it to um, people like you, basically. So what I decided to do, rather than try to go from the beginning of how the heck I got from here, I'll try to go backwards, if that makes any sense. So, um, and yeah, go from there. So, and, oh, well, just a quick primer or whatever. So, yes, this is World War I. This is uh, Der Weltkrieg modified beyond belief. I wouldn't even call it Der Weltkrieg anymore. Uh, it's a Der Weltkrieg map. How's that with some of the rules used? Um, right now I'm in um, uh, the turn, but uh, each turn is about four to five days long in, in this uh, thing. There's about seven turns per month. I'm following that. Uh, and right now, but I hate using turn one of, no, I, I'm just not into that. I like I'm far more into the narrative. That's what I'm trying to get you uh, get into. I hope you're going to see is that the game system or whatever is just a component to what I'm doing. Uh, it's an exploration and, and hopefully when I backtrack or we go backwards, we can see that. I don't know if we will. So right now we're at the 18th to the 21st of November, 1914. I started playing this game back in March, 2021. So that should give you a uh, good indication of how glacial I'm taking things considering the uh, game starts in late August, uh, 1914. Anyways, so there you go. So let's get, uh, so right now I'm doing the Russian turn. They're the yellow guys. I'm, I'm uh, sorry to say that, yeah, you're using, uh, seeing the grand strategic whatever map, not the close-up bits. Um, none of these counters are store-bought counters. They're all homemade. All the information uh, that you see down here is, well, you can't really see it probably because it's too high up and the magnification is not what you can see. So I'm just going to give you the grand strategic things and then we'll go from there. And maybe uh, later on I'll do a, um, you know, a closer up shot or, and so on and so forth. So I'm doing the Russian turn um, and I'll give you the situation. Um, the Russians are in a lot of trouble from a war standpoint uh, or a, how does that work? Um, the Germans right now are winning the battles, but they're not going to win the war. And what I mean by that is the way this game is played out, it's with demoralization. You're trying to, ha uh, you're trying to erode uh, the will essentially of the other side and there's various ways of doing that uh you know you can combat and so you know wear them down like kill their supply you get the idea um that's the primary goal you're trying to wear them out that way you're not trying to like perhaps not i mean obviously you know it's a side effect of knocking out units and so on and so forth but that's not your you shouldn't be uh, at least for me i shouldn't be focusing on that i should be trying to focus on demoralization what would it take should I take population centers? Should I, like, you know, you get, uh, keep Russian units in East Prussia and so on and so forth. These things cause issues for Germany. 
uh, the central power. So we've got the white guys down here. The, those are the Austro-Hungarians, uh, essentially um, coming in through the Carpathians and trying to um, protect their area of Galicia. And then you've got the uh, the Germans over here trying to push the Russians out of uh, Silesia, which they've done a great job of, and uh, East Prussia over here, and take over Warsaw, which is over here. So there you go. Um, the Russians have barely any supply. They've got tons of troops, uh, poorly organized, disor uh, um, they're disoriented all over the place. Um, the command and con control structure is uh, brutal, the way I've been narrating it. There's been firings left, right, and center. For example, Ruski, Nikolai Ruski, the Third Army, uh, historically a uh, Russian Army officer, uh, um, commander over here, he's been fired, uh, replaced by Anatoly Rosenshield, who was just uh, uh, a freaking division commander uh, just a little while ago. Um, he's there. Uh, Brusilov was temporary. Well, he was fired, brought back. So there's 8th Army here. There's 3rd Army here. Um, like I said, and the new, uh, the newly appointed uh, guy, I'm just, you know what, maybe this is just going to be like a part A and I'm just going to have to keep on going because uh, I'm good at these things. You know what I mean? So maybe that's what it is. It's a rehearsal. Um, the uh, head of uh, Stavka, um, used to be over in, uh, oh, darn it, Baron and Vici. And uh, I moved them over here to uh, Brest-Litovsk, I do believe is, um, probably not how you pronounce it. But I just thought it was a greater place just due to the fact of a monster hub and it's, and it's a great spot uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so let's, yeah, you know what, let's just slow down and maybe do one little recap video at a time as I go across here. To help people out because I'm, I'm well I'm surprised uh, maybe I shouldn't be I, I don't know or no I am I'm surprised I, I, it's a nice no what I should be saying is it is a nice feeling um, to have other people go hey what's going on I'm interested uh, I'm just like whoa because you got to remember on the flip side I'm interested in other people's stuff so I'm like what you're interested in my like you know what I'm saying anyways we'll, we'll, go, we'll get back to this so I just finished doing, uh, so the situation right now is, let's just look at it quickly and then I'll, I'll start talking into the micros. Right now, yeah, let's just do that. Um, it's mid-November. Both sides know full flipping well. By the end of November, there's going to be a pause during December into January. I'm calling it the uh, December truce, kind of like an extension of the Christmas truce. It's kind of like uh, everybody, uh, so everybody that is involved with the World War. By the way, I'm just going to say this. I know people have said this time and time and time again. Oh, the World War I was the first war that involved every continent except Antarctica. I disagree. It also included Antarctica. And I'll, uh, I'll explain to you why. Shackleton was on his way to Antarctica when World War I uh, was breaking out. I think he offered his ship or whatever, and they said, oh, let's go off, you know, do your thing. One of the first things he did when he got back or rescued or whatever is, uh, when did the war end? Who won, basically? And was gobsmacked, stunned that it was still going on. So don't you tell me that World War I did not affect every single freaking continent on the planet. It did. End of. That's, that's what I'm going with. Okay, so there we go. Hold on. So, I think the Germans miscalculated slightly. It's just so bizarre, too, because this whole thing has been predicated on this monster thing I was doing with Operation Luther. We'll get to it. Trust me, at some point. And, oh, my big thing, I was like super whatever, pretending to be a junior logistical officer and showing, you know, uh, the old dudes and so on and so forth. Actually, I was, um, would have been uh, in the basement listening to these people at the war table. I could hear the creaking of them walking back and forth and so on and so forth and figuring out which uh, 
general was a bit more nervous and the older dude who could barely walk and was always just like stuffing out his cigarette butts on the freaking table that type of stuff um They wanted to do a November massive attack. They've got tons of, uh, well, they've stripped the garrisons like there's no flipping tomorrow. They've got the stung divisions coming in. The German, like I said, the Germans are winning the battle, but they're not winning the war. Uh, if, uh, I did, if I did not look at demoralization and just look at it the way the flow is going, things are going well for the Germans overall in the long run. It's going to take a long time um, because the Russians are being extremely, Extremely stubborn uh, up here. There, it's going to take a lot of resources, especially once trenches start kicking in. Um, that's just the way it goes. And then we start, you know, incorporating that into the grander s scheme of things, which I'm doing. I'm doing all the other conflict zones, um, not at this detail, for goodness sakes. Um, it's going to have impacts. You know, and you can't keep drawing more resources from other conflict zones without having. Uh, you know, implications to what's going on there. Uh, you get the idea. Okay, let's go back to here because this is far more specific. Uh, the Austro-Hungarians historically are doing way better than they did. Um, yeah, they're doing way better than they did historically. There's no way in hell they should be here, um, uh, way up uh, towards the original borders um, uh, in November. They should be way towards here in the Carpathians. Um, Excuse me, but uh, that's just not the way it happened. It was looking that way. And um, essentially the Russians, oh darn it, I'm gonna have to look back. It's been so long. I, it just sputtered out. Um, so let's get back to this because I, obviously I'm uh, getting sidetracked yet again. Um, so I finished doing the Eighth Army. So what, what have I done? Let's pop my glasses on actually. So what have I done with the Eighth Army? I've decided to, uh, yeah, I wasn't allowed to, uh, I'm not allowed to move um, troops from one major river, uh, across a major river from one enemy zone of control to the other. So I couldn't move uh, this group here, which are now here. They were from here. I was going to try to move some of them from here. I can't do that. So what I decided to do is move them from here to here because they still got the woods. It's not the best in the universe, but it's it's not bad. Um then I moved the, uh, this guy who used to be from here to here, get there. What I'm trying to say is, yes, and you, you could say, oh, that, therefore you're not allowed, you're not going to be able to move them back from here. I can, kind of. I'm using the little rule trick, which is um, if these guys do uh, do some combat and force a retreat, they're forcing me to retreat. So they're giving me something I'm not able to do, which is move across a major river from any zone to control their enemy zone of control, I hope. Uh, I'll have to make sure I didn't screw myself up with some kind of like sub rule, which is, oh yeah, by the way, if you're forced to retreat uh, across a major river from zone of control, enemy zone of control to enemy zone of control, um, no, you're not allowed to do that. You're destroyed instead. I hope to God that's not the truth. I'd be in trouble. So I moved, uh, like I said, I moved, so, uh, moved the troops that were from here to there. I moved the troops from there to there. Um, I moved the troops that were from here to there. And I moved one of the troops from here to here, the 4th Rifles Brigade. I'm trying to slow people down. I'm trying to draw troops away. Uh, uh, the second army, uh, you know, it's just so bizarre. This is almost like a reverse tape. Uh, because way back when, the Austro-Hungarian second army was going backwards this way trying to draw uh, Brusilov and whatnot up here and using the major river as this weird uh, slank back and forth. And it's exactly what's happening, but in reverse. Now, Brusilov is going backwards, back towards uh, uh, Cernovitz. Uh, doesn't want to, but I brought... Uh, so what I did, this is, I guess, an executive order or whatever, and a side note, if you want to call it that. And I totally, uh, Rosenshield decided that uh, the replacement units that were on rail here, you know what, I'm going to try to give Brusilov uh, a little bit more help. We just pop, I just popped in six strength points worth of replacement units across the board here. I'm going to move a little bit of wriggly jiggly around here to see if I can uh, help out some of these guys. But the reality is I don't think I can. Uh, remember, these are all like uh, Opal Cheney uh, brigades, people's militia brigades, which I was able to release at some later point. 
I've added a wrinkle to the rules in that I've decided, okay, I'm not allowed to attack with them. Um, I'm only allowed to counterattack and I can't bump them up. They, they're stuck at one strength point, but I've got something there. Uh, they're roadblocks or bumps or, you know, those speed bumps or whatever. Um, so that's that. Uh, so I decided to send some replacement points over to Cernovitz, uh, Cernovitz and um, they derailed and I'm going to bring them up towards here. I've got to get them uh, towards Brusilov uh, and uh, be able to train them up and, and send them off. But I thought, you know what, three strength points, maybe that'll help. I don't know. We'll see. But I got to try something out here. Uh, this is a gaping hole. I'm trying to figure out some way of perhaps maybe stripping out. I don't know if I can. I think the Austro-Hungarians got me, got my goat there, but uh, obviously I can't leave. I'm not leaving. Shit! It, the thing is, is that I've converted some rail here. This is the Southwest um, Engineering uh, uh, Regiment over here, and they converted some rail to get my hell out back to uh, Proskurov. I can tell you that much. But um, I converted some rail here. I, I brought over actually the Proskurov uh, Opelcheni Brigade over here to protect the railhead. But it's like, damn you to hell, I'm going to have to give it up. I can't bring anybody. So that's, see what I mean? Like, okay, that's going to cost me two points. Uh, so, no, three. So that's one point to get out of, out of an enemy zone of control. Uh, and then uh, one mo movement point just to go there. And then three, I'm effed. Um, shit. Yeah, they're going to, uh, they'll just take the railhead. Oh, well, it's the way it goes. But uh, the way I'm going to look at it is every time they chase somebody's tail, I'm just going to hope it's a phantom tail or, or uh, not a very important tail. And just keep using up your leg. Just keep using up your troops. Keep using up your time. Keep uh, using up your resources, Mr. Hungarian or Austro Germans, because they've got some inserted or embedded or whatever the hell, like I said in the last video. Um, I just remember their. Um, uh, Way back when, watching uh, PBS News Hour, and they were showing um, um, some South African reporter, I think, uh, and she was um, uh, being inserted or whatever the hell they called it uh, into these troops that was going into Iraq. And I was just like, whoa, trippy. But anyway, you get the idea. Uh, so that's it. So I'm trying to. We'll see how it works. And yet again, um, uh, this is tricky business so that's that we're at the third army right now Anatoly Rosen Shields uh, popped in his replacement units I'm trying to figure out some way of uh, stemming I you know like I said uh, they've broken across the river I don't I don't the, uh, yeah they're hitting me in both sides here it's, it's a nightmare um, I'll assess it it's gonna take a bloody bloody long time man um, and I don't care uh, it's, uh, this is just fun as hell. I don't know if you can see a red arrow over there way off in the distance, but that's just to remind myself that by the way, uh, come January, I have to start looking at the bigger picture for this area. And that's a, a chunk of the map for these scenarios in Dervelt Krieg. Uh, when I started playing this game, like I said, maybe I'll do another video and we'll go backtrack a little bit. Um, is that, uh, that was not part of the thing, but now it is going to be part of that thing. And I've got to start figuring out, oh, and there's Riga way the heck over there. I've talked about it enough times, or not enough times, actually, I should say, a few times um, on my live streams. And I've got to start talking about, figuring out about that. I don't know about Memo and all that, uh, like what ends up becoming Latvia and all that stuff. I don't know any of that uh, bits. I don't know who the hell's in control of what, and, you know, how hard it was. Obviously, I know that uh, Russia was in charge of Riga because the Germans were trying to uh, take it every five freaking seconds. So, um, and uh, I actually think uh, Telemachus there um, a week ago was mentioning, by the way, well, if they took Riga, they're like, um, you know, um, basically a stone's throw away from Petrograd, I think is what you were saying, was the, um, the capital of Russia back then. I have no idea. <laughs> no idea, man. All right, so that's it. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to figure out this headache, which is the... Uh, Russian third army over here yeah I should like I said I've got to start uh, looking at it from this uh, aspect and then I'm just gonna start it's weird because I've uh, like I said I've got to look at it from here but then I've also it's like wait a minute you're I'm affecting what's going on with other people with the fifth and so on and so forth so I have to uh, talk to each other as we you know go across but I'm not I'm not allowed to do you know what I mean it's like well 
that's my army, piss off, you know, kind of thing. And But then you've got this guy who says, well, no, um, screw you with your piss off because I'm telling you, uh, like I'm overriding your, you know, your piss off kind of thing. You get the idea. All right, so that's that, I kind of think. I'm so sorry, man. I'm not like ultra, you know, I'm amateur hour. What do you want? Keepers jumping. All right.